Namaste. In today's lecture, we will have a look at radio telemetry, which is a technique to monitor individual animals or groups of them using radio waves. So, coming to the preliminaries, radio telemetry consists of this word telemetry. Tele means distance. So, this is the same thing that goes in words like telescope which is looking at a distance, telephone, which is talking at a distance, television, which is seeing at a distance and so on. So, tele means distance. Then metry, it comes from the word metron, which means to measure or measurement. So, metry would come in photogrammetry, which is measurements using photographs or it can come in trigonometry, which is measurements using triangles and so on. So, telemetry means to measure at a distance. So, coming back to the slides, we have the word roots uh, distant and measurement. So, telemetry is the process of recording and transmitting the readings of an instrument which is measurement. So, you are measuring something with an instrument and you are recording and transmitting the readings of the instrument at a distance and radio telemetry is telemetry that is done using radio waves. So, in the context of wildlife management, radio telemetry refers to the tracking of wild animals through use of sensors, transmitters and receivers. So, we have a sensor that is placed with the animal, a transmitter which again is placed with the animal and then those signals that are given out by the transmitter are then received by us and we make use of that information. So, there are three formats in which radio telemetry is classically done. So, the first is VHF radio tracking. So, VHF stands for very high frequency. So, these are radio waves at very high frequency that we use to track the animals. The second is GPS tracking and the third is GPS plus satellite combination tracking. Now, GPS stands for global positioning system. So, this is a system that consists of a number of satellites that are uh, revolving around the earth and we use this these satellites to get our position and that position can either be uh, recorded inside the collar that is put to an animal in the case of GPS tracking or this signal can be transmitted using satellite so that we can get the, uh, this, these data points at a distance. So, let us begin with uh, telecommunication. Now, telecommunication in the case of uh, radio telemetry, it consists of three parts. We have a transmitter, we have a receiving antenna and we have a receiver. So, when we look at a VHF uh, transmitter, so the transmitter is fitted to the animal through a collar and it transmits radio signals at in the very high frequency spectrum. So, what is the collar? So, this is a tiger that we saw in Panna and uh, this is the head of the, the tiger, this is the body of the tiger, this is the neck of the tiger and on this neck we can see this black colored strip which is collar. Now, a collar is a device uh, that is used to harness our equipments to the animal. So, this is our transmitter. So, this collar consists of a transmitter and a transmitter essentially consists of four components. So, one component as we have seen is the attachment method which is the collar. Then this transmitter requires a power source which is a battery. Then it consists of an electronics package consisting of a circuit board and crystal oscillators and it also consists of a transmitting antenna. So, these four things put together forms our transmitter. So, essentially we said that in the case of our transmission we had three things, one is a transmitter. Now, a transmitter consists of four parts, we have a collar that is used to attach it to the animal, we have a battery, we have electronics and we have a transmitting antenna.
so this is our transmitter the next component is our receiving antenna now in the case of receiving antenna coming back to the slides so single or multiple antenna can may be used when we are uh, receiving the signals that have been transmitted by the transmitter section yagi antenna are preferred due to their robust design and directionality so we'll come to yagi antenna in a short while the antenna are connected to the receiver through a coaxial cable so this is how a receiving antenna looks like so we have this antenna uh, which is a directional antenna and we hold it like this so that on the top there is a pole and this pole can give us the direction so essentially you have an antenna like this and the direction is given by the direction of this top rod so here we have this uh, top rod that gives us the the direction this cable that we can see here is the coaxial cable so this uh, antenna is uh, connected to the receiver using this coaxial cable this is the direction of the antenna and these uh, horizontal bars uh, give us extra sensitivity so the antenna can be used in two fashions so receiving antenna we generally have yagi antenna so these are the most common antenna but we can also go for some other antenna and these can be used in two fashions one is a top mode and the second is in i fashion so in the top mode you have this top and then we have these antenna and here we have the coaxial cable and this gives us the direction so the the direction tells us the the position of the transmitter and this is our handle now in the i fashion coming back to the slides the antenna may also be used in an i fashion for improved directionality at the cost of reduced sensitivity so essentially what it says is that when you are at a distance from the animal so essentially you are here uh, this is the animal with the transmitter so when you are at a great distance you will use your antenna like this so this will give you the direction of animal but because at a large distance your at this distance of d your signal is less so you have signal is to noise is less so essentially we want a greater sensitivity even at the cost of directionality we want a greater sensitivity because we want to detect that animal and we we want to have an approximate location or an approximate direction of that animal so we increase the gain in the equipment so gain is essentially a digital amplification of the signal by and also reduction of noise but once you have come close to the animal so say at this distance of d2 so at this distance the amount of signals that you are getting from the transmitter is large so at this distance you will put your antenna in an i fashion so this is the i fashion so this looks like our alphabet i so at this point and this is our coaxial cable so in this fashion when the antenna is used then it does not have a high sensitivity because we do not require a high sensitivity because as such the the level of signal is very high because of our closeness to the animals but the directionality is improved a lot so essentially you can very easily pinpoint the direction of the animal at the closer distances now the next thing is a receiver now receivers are devices that help isolate the frequency of the transmitter and depict it in the form of an audible pulse or the movement of a needle receivers often deploy digital signal processing 
and filters to improve the signal to noise ratio they may also have a data logging unit. So, this is how a receiver looks like. So, we had an antenna to which a coaxial cable was connected and this cable is then connected to the receiver. Now, this receiver would be having some set frequencies which we can select using these numbers. So, these are some, some preset frequencies because we have a number of animals in the field. So, every animal can be given a different collar which gives out a different frequency and we can select those frequencies by these numbers. Now, there is a tuning knob through which we can fine tune the signal. So, say if it is giving out at a, a frequency of uh, say x hertz. So, this x hertz can be increased by uh, can be increased or decreased by very small values. So, that we can pinpoint uh, the exact frequency that is given out by the transmitter. And then we also have a, a knob for gain. So, gain is essentially your digital amplification of the signal. So, when you increase this gain to a higher value, you will be able to hear a loud pulse. When you decrease it, you will be able to hear a very uh, moderate pulse. Now, how do we use this device to locate the animal in the field? So, you have a tiger which is wearing a collar. This collar is giving out some set frequency and now you have your antenna and you have your receiver and you want to locate where this tiger is. To determine the position of the collared animal, two methods can be deployed. One is called triangulation and the second is called homing. Now, in the method of triangulation, the operator stands at a certain location and moves the antenna to the direction where the signal is the strongest. This directional bearing is noted using a compass. Then the operator moves to a second location and repeats the process with the two locations defining the base vertices of the triangle with the side length of d and the two angles alpha and beta discerned from the compass bearings. The third vertex can be computed. This vertex is the position of the collared animal and in practice multiple locations and multiple bearings are used to reduce the error in positioning of the animal. So, this is how it looks in the field. So, there is an animal somewhere out there. So, you stand at one position, you take, uh, you move your antenna to uh, a direction at which the, uh, the level of the signal that is received from the transmitter is the highest. So, you are getting a very loud sized pulse like beep, beep, beep. So, at that uh, direction, you note the bearing of this uh, antenna using a compass and then you go to another location and repeat the process. So, essentially what we are doing here is that you have an animal somewhere here, you are standing at point location A. At this location, you moved your antenna to the direction where you have the highest signal. So, you get this angle alpha. So, this angle is generally taken in the form of a bearing. So, a bearing means that when you have a compass, so you have north, south, east and west. So, if you are getting this angle, you will write it as say north 45 east, which means that you are talking about this angle and from this angle, so this is your 45 degrees. From this angle, you can compute this angle very easily. So, this again will be 45 degrees and you are getting the value of alpha is 45 degrees. Then you move to another location B and at this location, you again find out the direction of the animal from this location and here you get an angle of beta, say beta is equal to 60 degrees. Now, you come back, you plot your locations. So, you, we can have a GPS reading. A GPS reading will give us the latitude and longitude of point A and similarly a lat long for point B. Once you have these lat longs, you can come back and plot both of these locations on a map. Once you have plotted them out, you can draw a straight line and then on this straight line, you can draw these two lines with the same angles alpha and beta. And once you have done, the point where uh, these two intersect is the location of the animal. Now, it is easy to see it in theory, but in practice, remember that this triangulation is being done at large distances. 
Now, at large distances, when you are using your antenna in this fashion, you are holding it up. So, you have a, a high sensitivity of the antenna, but directionality is not that good. So, essentially, when we are saying an angle of 45 degrees, this could be say 40 degrees or this could be as much as 50 degrees. So, in that case, you can draw two lines. So, one is for 40 degrees and one is for 50 degrees. So, here you have these two rays. Similarly, at position B, you have these two rays. just because your directionality is not that good. So, in that case your animal can be anywhere within this quadrilateral. Now, to know the exact uh, location of the animal we can employ two techniques. One is that we can just draw these two lines joining the opposite vertices. So, or the, the two diagonals and we, then we will say that that this point where both these diagonals are meeting is our location of the animal, but then this is just an approximate location. To get a better location what we can do is in place of taking just two points we also take a third point. So, this point is C. Now, at this point again we noted the bearing of the animal, again there will be level of, of uncertainty. But what it has done? is that in place of using this whole of the whole of this quadrilateral we have removed these locations. So, this these two locations are now gone. So, we only have this smaller uh, polygon from which we need to uh, get the which represents the location of the animal. Then we can take another point say this point D and this point again we have a bearing, but there is an error involved. So, now we have reduced our polygon even further. So, essentially now our animal is somewhere within this smaller polygon. So, by taking more and more points we reduce the errors that are there in the location of this animal. If we took another point say somewhere here point E then we would be able to reduce it even further. So, at each step we are removing some portions of the polygon to get a another smaller polygon which gives us the location of the animal. So, this is an iterative process which can go again uh, and again till we we'll reach a level of uh, accuracy that is good enough for us. The second way in which we locate the animal is through homing. Now, in this method the operator stands at a certain position and moves the antenna to the direction where the signal is the strongest. Then keeping the direction fixed he or she starts moving towards the animal. As the distance to the animal reduces the signal intensity increases and louder beeps are heard. These are then compensated by reducing the gain in the receiver. At very close distances the antenna may be deployed in the shape of alphabet i which is the i shaped fashion or the antenna may be removed and just the coaxial connection used as an antenna. In this manner the operator is able to reach the animal through homing. Now, what we are doing in this case is that we have this animal here. So, this is our location of the animal we are at this location. So, this is the position of the observer. So, we used our antenna in the vertical fashion. So, we hold our antenna like this and then we turn it around. So, we get an approximate directionality at which the uh, our beats are the loudest. So, suppose we got it as so this is our actual uh, directionality which should come, but because of the errors we make this assumption that our animal is somewhere between these two lines. So, between these two rays let us call it O A 1 and O A 2. So, our animal is somewhere between uh, these two lines O A 1 and O A 2. So, now what we do is we move closer to the animal. So, we start moving along this line then at this point we repeat the process. 
so at this point we again get this bearing and then somewhere are with our errors it is goes something like this then we repeat the process we get to another point now once we have moved from the position o to o1 and then to o2 now at this position o2 the signals that are coming from our animal are very high because of our closeness to the animal so at point o2 probably our beeps are very loud so they are beep 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 so in that situation we reduce the gain then we go on repeating this process so after a while we have reached so close to the animal that even the antenna is not required so we take out the antenna we just use the the coaxial cable so we hold it in our hands like this and then we try to figure out what is the direction of the angle or else we can use our antenna in the i fashion so in the i fashion we hold it like this horizontally so it does not have a very high sensitivity but it has a very good directionality so once we have done that so we are able to pinpoint the location in with very less error and just by repeating this process again and again and again we'll be able to reach the animal which is the position of the animal now you might think that uh, this is a tiger which is wearing a collar so how can somebody go so close to the animal now of course uh, when you are doing an exercise in homing you do not walk on foot most of the times when you are having an animal like tiger that you are trying to home into you move on an elephant back so that uh, you are safe but in the case of other animals because these collars are not just specific to tigers you can also put it on a bara finga or you can put it on a chital or on a sambar so once you have these herbivores it's very easy to go very close to the animal now why do why would you want to go so close to the animal now in certain circumstances it might be required to immobilize this animal so basically you have uh, you have put this collar this collar has a battery and every battery has a battery life so suppose this Uh, collar has a battery life of three years, and you have already reached two and a half years. So now you think that in the next six months my collar will go off. So why not change the battery? So when you want to change this battery, you'll have to go back to the animal. You'll have to dart it. So darting and immobilization is something that we'll cover in another module. But essentially, you are you are immobilizing this animal. So you uh, shoot it with a, a chemical laden dart. It becomes unconscious. You go there. You remove the collar. replace the battery or put another collar and then put it on the animal so which in those circumstances homing is extremely crucial otherwise in the case of tiger reserves we also use homing in situations when some tourist has told us that one of your tigers and has clicked a picture that one of your your tigers which has a collar has become hurt because of say fighting with another tiger a territorial fight now in such a circumstance it becomes uh, very much essential to go to that tiger and its level of hurt so you'll take a veterinarian to the tiger who will analyze its situation and then take a decision whether these wounds are going to heal on by themselves or whether we need to perform some uh, some veterinary operations so probably we would need to immobilize this tiger then put some antibiotics or antiseptics clean up the wound or maybe even stitch it in, in at times so for those circumstances also homing becomes extremely crucial so coming back to the slides this is how a homing operation would look like so you have an antenna you are at a distance uh, this antenna gives you the direction of the animal you take this antenna and you start moving towards the animal till you reach the animal now all these were regarding our vhf collars another kind of collar is a gps radio telemetry through collaring now what is gps GPS stands for Global Positioning System. Now, this system consists of a number of satellites, and at any location on the Earth, we can get signals from a number of these satellites. So, what we are trying to do in this case is, suppose we are there on the Earth. So, suppose this is our location, and this. these are the four satellites that we are getting our signal these are the three satellites that we are getting our signals from so we can measure our distances from all these three satellites so let us call it d1 d2 and d3 so 
we know the, the positions of these satellites because they uh, move in certain specific orbits and once we have these three locations what we are trying to do is suppose this is our first satellite and we are at a distance of d1 from it so we are at a distance of d1 from satellite s1 so our position with respect to this satellite is given by this sphere on which we would be there now if we have a second satellite and we are at a distance of d2 from the second satellite s2 so our location would be given by this second sphere so let us make it in red so by using two satellites so we are on this sphere sphere 1 s1 or let us call it sphere 1 so we are somewhere on the surface of sphere 1 and we are somewhere on the surface of sphere 2 which would give us that our location is somewhere on this circle that is formed by the intersection of these two spheres now if we have a third satellite so let us have this third satellite s3 and we are at a certain distance from this third satellite given by a value of d3 so now this satellite the the sphere that is formed by this satellite so we are on the surface of sphere 1 sphere 2 and sphere 3 so now an intersection of two spheres would give us a circle now this third sphere is going to cut the circle at two points so this is point p1 and this is point p2 so we are at either point p1 or we are at point p2 now because we are on the surface of the earth so suppose this is the surface of the earth so this is another sphere at uh, now this is the center of the earth so let us call it e and the radius of the earth is given by r e so now this also forms another fourth sphere now this sphere is uh, going to intersect either this point p2 or it is going to intersect point p1 the other point will either be away from the sphere or it is going to be inside the sphere so by using these four spheres we can very accurately pinpoint that our location is p2 so uh, a gps satellite essentially when we are using a GPS satellite we are finding out our distances from different satellites and by knowing the positions of these satellites we are drawing a number of spheres and the intersection of those spheres and the, the intersection of the earth gives us our location in the three dimensional space. Now GPS tracking is being deployed these days on the animals so when we do that we can use it in two modes so we can have uh, an animal which has a collar that collar has a, a GPS uh, receiving device and that collar will find out the location of the animal and will go on recording it uh, in a data logger and then later on we can go to the animal we can dart it or we can uh, program our collar in a way that after a certain while this collar drops off by itself so once this collar has come out of the animal we can go there we can uh, retrieve it back and then we can take out the data from the GPS device which was there in the corner. So before proceeding further let me show you how uh, uh, one of these uh, these GPS devices works. So we observed how using our handheld devices we can get our positions in the form of latitudes, longitudes as well as elevation. Now when we deploy a GPS device in the form of a collar we tune our device in such a way that these values of latitude, longitude and elevation are continuously logged in a data logger that is connected with that device. So once uh, uh, we, uh, we have deployed our caller for a specified period of time as is required we can then again go back to the animal using, uh, the, the, using the process of homing. Now all these uh, GPS callers also have a VHF uh, transmitter attached to them so we can always home into these animals along with getting these GPS signals once we have gone to, to these animals we can use 
a mechanism in which when we we press a button on our device then it signals this collar to detach itself from the animal. So, this collar will just drop off it is called a drop off collar. Once that is done we can go retrieve that collar and then uh, from its data logger we can get all the coordinates uh, which are uh, recorded at a specific time intervals. So, we know that at, at all these different time points this animal had visited all these different locations. So, that is one way of getting the location of the animal using GPS collars. The second way is using a GPS plus satellite combination tracking. So, these collars are GPS plus satellite combinations. So, what they do is that they have a, a GPS receiver inside. So, they know the latitude, longitude and elevation of that place, but they also have transmitter that can transmit signals back to the satellites and these are different satellites than the GPS satellites. So, these are, are telecommunication satellites. So, once this device has uh, logged uh, latitude, longitude and elevation uh, locations or data points for a, a specific uh, time frame, it will then transmit this data to the satellites and then from those satellites we will get these data back at our control stations. So, in this way you do not have to go back to the animal to retrieve your data points, but essentially what we are doing in this case is that we have an animal with the collar. then there is a telecommunication satellite that is going somewhere on top of us and suppose this is our control station. So, this caller after getting GPS coordinates and the elevation will then transmit the signal to the satellite which will then relay it back to the control station. From this control station we will directly get the lat long and elevation. Now, the benefit of using a GPS collar with satellite combination tracking is two folds. One you do not we have no need to retrieve the collar to get data, because this data is continuously being uh, received at the control station and two is that it is near real time, because this caller is continuously transmitting the lat long and elevation data to our control station. So, we can know within say 20 or 30 minutes where this animal has been. The minus point or the drawback of using this GPS plus satellite combination caller is that because of an extra transmitter which is the satellite transmitter and remember that this transmitter needs to have such a large amount of power that it should be able to transmit the signals right up to the satellites. So, essentially it has larger, larger power consumption which also means that the battery drains faster. Now, to circumvent uh, the problem of battery draining faster, because if a battery drains faster then it means that you can deploy this satellite uh, this collar for a very small period of time. So, to compensate for that you have a larger sized battery. So, to compensate you have a larger battery. Now, a larger battery in turn means more weight. Now, more weight reduces our options of putting this, this satellite collar, this uh, GPS plus satellite collar onto the animals, because typically for any animal the weight of the collar that can be used with this animal is typically less than 3 percent of its body weight. The maximum you can go is close to around 5 percent of the body weight, because if the collar is too heavy then it will restrict the movement of the animal and will restrict the normal natural activities of the animal. So, we typically have to uh, have a, a weight cut off of around 3 percent of the body weight. Now, if your collar is very big then you cannot deploy it on smaller animals. So, this also becomes a drawback with these collars.
So, in this lecture we looked at radio telemetry, we looked at, at, at uh, different kinds uh, or different ways in which we perform radio telemetry. We can do it using a VHF caller which is a very high frequency caller. We can use it with a GPS caller in which uh, these GPS data are logged into a data logger and then we can retrieve it back. Third, we can go for a GPS plus satellite combination tracking in which we can get a real time location of the animal, but with uh, a drawback of having more weight in the collar which reduces our options of deploying it. Then in the case of uh, VHF collar, we saw that we can locate our animal using two ways, one is triangulation and second is homing. In the case of triangulation, we take multiple readings, multiple bearings at different locations, then we draw lines to that location and where those lines intersect is where we have our animal. In the case of homing, we uh, uh, will we get the direction of the animal using our antenna, then we move closer so that its signal intensity is greater. In that case, we deploy our antenna in an I fashion or we only make use of the coaxial cable to get even uh, finer location or finer bearing of the animal and then we move closer and we actually get to the animal. So, radio telemetry is uh, these days a very important technique for monitoring of animals, for monitoring individual animals as well as for monitoring of a pack of animals. So, we get data about say in the case of tigers, if these tigers are, are wholly resident in our forest or whether they are going outside, whether they are migrating, if they are migrating what migration routes are they taking, if they are dispersing what dispersal routes they are taking, at what uh, times do these animals rest, at what times do these animals move, whether they are moving in the daytime, whether they are moving in the night time and data such as these. So, this is a very important technique and that is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.